Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dua is the bond connecting the slave with his Lord. It's a great act of worship because there is no mediator between us and Allah Azza wa It's us to him direct. Uh, and the Prophet Sallallahu told us, and this is reported by a Tirmidhi classified as authentic by Albani, he said, there is nothing more honorable to Allah than dua. There is nothing dearer to Allah, nothing more honorable in the sight of Allah, in the scale of Allah, than asking Allah Azza wa And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam encouraged us to abundantly ask Allah Azza wa He said, Abundantly say Ya Dal Jalali Wal Ikram as a form of asking Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, the greatness of this act of worship, of dua, comes from the fact that uh, it is a way the slave submits and admits to the greatness and might of Allah Azza wa Jal, to the power of Allah Azza wa Jal, and that He is in need of Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is not in need of anyone or anything. And during dua, the, the slave shows humility and humbleness to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal commanded us to uh, supplicate and ask him, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ ادْعُونِي Your Lord said, ask of me. What's the result? أستجب لكم, I will respond. So he commanded us to supplicate and he promised us that if you supplicate, I will honor your supplication. Not only that, to reflect the importance of this act of worship, whoever refrains from asking Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah will become angry with him. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever refrains from supplicating Allah, Allah will become angry with him. This is just to encourage people, to motivate people to ask their needs of Allah or from Allah. In one of the narrations, the Prophet ﷺ said, Ask Allah everything including salt for your food. Subhanallah. Now, Ramadan is a very distinct period for dua. As a matter of fact, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal, in the middle of the verses where he was enjoining the, 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 uh, the act of fasting, he said to Muhammad وسلم, And when my slaves, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِي When my slaves ask you about me, فَإِنِّي قَرِيب I am near. So, this is in the middle of كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصيام. وَأُحِلَّ لَكُمُ لَيْلَةَ الصِّيَامِ الرَّفَثِ الصيام was enjoined upon you and then the next verse and then after this verse Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us the details of what's allowed and what's not allowed whilst fasting. So dua is in Ramadan more significant than uh, other times and no one's dua will go to waste. As the Prophet ﷺ told us, but it's up to the decree of Allah, the will of Allah Azza wa Jal and the wisdom of Allah when and how he responds. The Prophet ﷺ was besieged for three years. He was asking Allah, but the answer was delayed three years. And that's for a wisdom. Allah Azza wa Jal only knows what the wisdom is. And no one has the right to ask Allah why. Do you delay and why do you respond to this one fast and to me delayed? So, again, the Prophet ﷺ told us, and this is reported by a Tirmidhi. He said, whenever the slave asks Allah Azza wa Jal, and he supplicates Allah Azza wa Jal, he will get one of three things. He will either get what he asked for immediately, or Allah Azza wa Jal will store that for him until the day of judgment or that Allah Azza wa Jal will protect him from an evil equivalent to the extent he supplicated Allah Azza wa Jal. So it will not go to waste and you don't know which one is better for you but Allah does. So Allah Azza wa Jal decrees what is the best for the slave 
even though we might not know what the best is. Uh, there are conditions for dua to be accepted. Number one, first and foremost, sincerity to Allah Azza wa Jal. It has, you have to be sincere to Allah Azza wa Jal. You cannot be hasty. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, uh, you will continue to be responded to for your dua. Dua will be honored. Uh, unless you hasten and say, ah, I supplicated Allah, but he didn't answer me. Nothing happened. Then you have ruined the chance of being responded to. Uh, you cannot supplicate Allah Azza wa Jal for something that is a sin or severing ties with kinfolks. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah will, or one of you will continue to be uh, responded to for, for the dua uh, so long as they do not supplicate Allah Azza wa Jal to sever ties with kinship uh, or ask Allah Azza wa Jal for something that is haram. Uh, for example, uh, one uh, falls in love with a girl, which is, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend issue is not in Islam. Right? So he says, to ask Allah, oh Allah, please facilitate that I go on a date with her. That's haram. That's not going to be responded to. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ gave us an example. Uh, he mentioned the man who's uh, dusty, you know, traveling all the time, seeking sustenance and, and provision for himself and his, uh, his family, those who, who are under his guardianship. And he said, the following are his descriptions. Uh, he said he was fed with haram or he eats from haram, he drinks from haram, and he grew up. His flesh grew on ill-gotten uh, money or provision. And he raises his hand and he says, My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. The Prophet ﷺ said, He will never be responded to. His dua will never be honored. Uh, Yahya ibn Mu'ad was talking to a person uh, or to a group of people. He said, uh, Don't feel that your dua is being delayed. Don't wonder why it is not being responded to. When you're blocking response from Allah to happen by your sins and ill behavior. There are manners and etiquettes for dua. Number one, you start by praising Allah, alhamdulillah, and then say in salah on Prophet, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, being determined, being uh, confident that Allah Azza wa Jal will respond. Uh, don't be doubtful. Oh Allah, respond if you want. The Prophet ﷺ forbade us from saying that. He said, no one should say, oh Allah, respond to me if you want. So if you don't want, so you're not sure that Allah, this is, uh, this is ill thoughts of Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, raising the hand when in dua, in this form, uh, either to the shoulder or a higher. Uh, number two, face in the direction of Qibla. <laughs> Next is being on, uh, in the state of ritual purity, wudu or ghusl. Uh, amongst the things that show your humbleness to Allah and your humility before Him is that you admit to your guilt and your shortcomings. And you also confess to His greatness and his favors upon you. Uh, and you show your need to him and to his help and his support. Uh, not transgressing the limits when you are supplicating Allah. Meaning, uh, as the scholar said, transgressing the limits is by asking Allah Azza wa for things that are not legislated, not allowed, or asking Allah Azza wa Jal for things that are impossible. Like one came to me once and said, uh, can I ask Allah to make me one of those 10 who are promised Jannah? What are we going to do with these 10 then? So this is trans, 
transgressing the limits uh, in dua, supplicating against someone without due right, just because you have a grudge against him, you hate him, you, you envy him. May Allah do this and do that to you. That's haram. Anyways, it's not responded to and it's haram. Another uh, one of the etiquettes is that uh, make sure you choose the right time uh, when dua is more likely to be responded to, like during sujood, while you're fasting in Ramadan, uh, during Qiyam al-Layl, especially the last third of uh, the night, during Laylatul Qadr, between Adhan and Iqama. Now, we're praying at home, yes, call the Adhan, and until you call the Iqama for the Salah, your, your child, your wife, your daughter might be uh, minutes delayed until they pray their sunnah. So utilize the time and, and supplicate Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, if it rains, then uh, ask Allah Azza wa Jal. Dua is, is uh, responded to and honored in that time. The last uh, hour on Friday from Asr to, uh, to Maghrib uh, at iftar, iftar time uh, and so on. One thing very important, brothers and sisters. Dua is not connected to a place or a period of time, meaning, يعني, uh, though we said it's recommended to uh, be selective when you ask Allah Azza wa but that doesn't mean I cannot supplicate Allah Azza wa except in these situations or positions or times. And it's not connected to the masjid, oh, we cannot go to the masjid, uh, what can we, well, you can ask Allah anywhere. If you're standing in the supermarket waiting for, uh, for the cashier to, to uh, start, you know, checking your items, you can, you can ask Allah then. You're driving your car, you can ask Allah then. You're exercising, you can ask Allah then. There is no set time and it's not limited nor restricted to a time or a period. Finally, we must know that the Prophet wasallam said that a fasting person has a supplication that will be honored every day. That is in Ramadan. A fasting person in general, the Prophet wasallam said, uh, and this is reported by Tabarani. There are three types of people whose supplications are answered, responded to, or re honored by Allah Azza wa One of them is a fasting person until he breaks his fast. Write 30 different matters that you wish to happen or things that you wish that Allah will protect you from. And every day ask Allah Azza wa amongst other things, but... Insist on that one thing for 30 days. You never know. It might be the right time. Assalamu alaikum.